you're going to use a formula. The what? The what? Yeah, okay, so you might look at this, and it's okay if you're not sure of this. You might look at this and say, okay, A is 4, hmm, okay, and the ratio, what do you think the ratio is going to be? Y over 3. But you look at that, and then you realize there's a problem. Can anybody tell me what the problem is? Yeah, it doesn't work, right? 4 times Y over 3 is not Y. So actually, what are you summing up on this? And then add 4. Exactly. You put the 4 on at the end, okay? So in this case, A is not going to be 4. What's A going to be? Y. And we know what that formula tells us that the infinite sum, if you sum these all together, it's going to be A times 1 minus R to the N all over 1 minus Y over 3. And then what do we have at the end here? Plus 4. Great. Here's the thing. We don't know what y is, and for certain values this will converge, and for certain values it won't. It'll diverge. What's the one thing we know about, we worked on this yesterday, what's the one thing we know about this? We know it's going to converge when one is true, and we know it's going to diverge when one is true. Mm -hmm. On the absolute value of y over 3. Oh, y, yeah, because y over 3 is the ratio, yes? The absolute value of that has to be what? Um, less than Therefore, if that is true, it converges, right? Yeah. So you know that the ratio is y over 3. So for this to converge, this has to be true, which means that y over 3 needs to be between 1 and. So therefore. Therefore, y. Uh, yeah. Like that. So if y is between those values, it converges. Yay. But now it asks, what does it converge to? Our answer will have y in it. But what does it converge to? Well, you have to evaluate this limit, right? And there's two pieces to it. Uh, let me get, where is the view? Oh, where, is it draw? Where is that turtle? There it is, insert space. Got to put some more hot, reactivate some hotkeys on this machine. Um, uh, you have to do this limit right here. Take this, and then you add four to it, right? But you're doing, what are you doing? You're doing the limit as n goes to infinity of this thing, right? That's what you're primarily interested in doing. And remember, ah, so if it's con so if it's converging, you know that y over three is less than one. So when you raise it to the nth power, what happens to this thing right here? What happens to this? It gets real small. So it goes to what? So when the absolute value of y over three is less than one, you know the whole thing converges. But because that's what we're looking at right now. So when this is true, this whole thing goes to zero. zero. So when you're taking the limit, this is actually going to come out to be y over what? 1 minus y minus y over 3 plus 4. Because the 4 has to go down right there. So when it's converging, this right here goes to 0. So what does this converge to? It converges to this. Do we expect to see y in the... Uh, uh, in the answer? Yes, we do, because we don't know what y is. It's gonna, what, what the series uh, sums to is going to be different depending on what y is. Does that kind of make sense? Ish? So how can we like, plug in numbers? Wrong, but look. Sorry, <laughs> Nate, no, no, it's Nate Manuel, right? Yeah, see, I, 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 some of it. I get like half a little star. I get like half a little star. I'm going to do one time the star. Um, what, what Nate was pointing out is this function right here represents what the, what the series sums to, right? So we said it only converges when, uh, when y is between negative 3 and 3. But can you plug in a number like 10 into this? Sure. <laughs> what I'm saying is just because you can get a numeric answer doesn't mean it applies to outside of its domain. It's the best I can do at this point. I'd have to think about that some more, but I can honestly say that's the first time I think I've been asked that, which is pretty cool. Good job. Okay. And because what are we doing here? We're looking really at this, right? This part? Yeah. So our first term is going to be 3x. Okay. What's our r value going to be? Yeah. So in this case, our a value and our r value are the same. Is that possible? Is that okay? Sure, there's no, there's no rule against it. So we're going to do this a couple ways, and this is one of them. So if we do this out, uh, what are we going to have here? 3x times 1 minus what? Or sorry, is it 1 minus or 1 plus? Is it 1 minus or 1 plus? Minus. Minus, yeah. 
1 minus 3x to the n all over 1 minus what? 3x. 3x. So we know this converges when the ratio, it, the absolute value of the ratio is less than 1. So x is going to have to be between 1 third and what? Negative 1 third. And what are we looking at? We're really looking at the limit as n goes to infinity of this thing right here. But when it converges, Matt, what does this go to? So when x is between these values, what does this go to when you take the limit? Zero. Goes to zero. So what are you left with? 3x over 1 minus 3x plus 1. So that would be the sum. Yep. Did I do something wrong? Why did you take the 1 out? Couldn't you just multiply the 1 inside? Oh, no, you're absolutely right. I'm totally right. Yeah, no, you could if you wanted to. You're, you're absolutely right. <laughs> because, like, what is 1 times 3x? <laughs> Yeah, sorry. I was doing what I was using like the clever tactic from the other one that you don't need to use in this case. So like this isn't wrong, but you're absolutely right. You could have just said a is one. Why don't we just um do the formula of the infinite geometric sequence? That's what we did. No, no, like the other one, which is like one minus x over value, and like not take the limit. Not take the limit. Like I'm showing. I was just doing okay. a little bit more to show you why the number is yes, yes, correct. Because it's asking you for what values there are, but yeah, you could write it a little bit more cleanly. Sure, sure. Okay, um, one way of valuing a company is to calculate the present value of all its future earnings. Suppose a farmer expects to sell 1,000 worth of Christmas trees once a year forever. What is the present value of the Christmas tree business? So when I first saw this question, I was like, that makes no sense. Are we using? That's important. Continuously. Is that important? Yeah, it is. So, do you remember what the formula is for continuous interest for finding the amount? Umi. Is that the initial amount times the to the rate? Yep. Time. 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 Pert. A equals pert. So, here's the thing. Let's. I'm going to ask you a simpler question. So, here's the formula for continuous interest. Let's say I wanted a thousand dollars to be in my bank account a hundred years from now. So, let's say I wanted a thousand dollars. 100 years from now. You with me so far? Let's choose an interest rate. Let's just choose a different one. 5% interest, okay? And it's going to be continuously. And I gotta make more space here. So my question is how much money do I need to put into my bank account right now so that I will have a thousand dollars in my account a hundred years from now? So how much money do I want in my account? A thousand. How much money am I starting with? We don't know that, but it's P. What's the interest rate? Ah, uh, 0.5 times 100, right? Are you with me so far? With me? Yay? So if I want to solve for this, P is going to be 1,000 over e to the fifth. Still with me? If you use your calculator, can someone use their calculator and tell me what this is approximately? Round to... Uh, cents. Six, is it, si anybody verify that? 6.74? So, do you understand what that means? If you put $6.74 in the bank right now, and it earned 5% continuously for 100 years, how much money is in the account at the end of 100 years? $1,000. So you just answered the question, how much is $1,000 100 years from now worth right now if you were compounding continuously 5%? So here's the deal. $1,000 in 100 years is only worth $6.74 right now. What happens if I said, how, what happens if I wanted it in like 1,000 years, right? Is that number going to go up or down? It's going to go way down because you have longer to turn into the $1,000. And we're not even accounting for inflation, by the way, right? We're not even talking about inflation. So here's the deal. If you have a hundred if you have a thousand dollars right now, it's gonna be a thousand dollars right now. We're gonna write this series out. A thousand here's the here's the initial thousand dollars that you just put into your account right now. It says how much the present value, and I think the question says it, right? It says uh, with the first sale, immediate future. You see immediate future? That means a thousand dollars has gone in right now. There's the first a thousand dollars. But if you wanted the present value of a thousand dollars at the end of one year, what is that gonna be? $1,000 equals PE, and what's the interest rate for this problem? Do you remember? 4%? And how many years? Two years. 
Oh, let's say one year. One year. We're starting with one. Okay, so it's times one year. So what do you get here? P is equal to 1,000 over what? E to the 0 0.04. So this right here represents how much money you would need to put into the bank right now to have $1,000 at the end of the year. So this is the value of $1,000 at the end of one. $1,000 a year from now is worth that much right now. This is how much $1,000 in one year is worth right now. You with me so far? What's the next term going to be? Times times 2. Exactly. So the next one's going to be 1,000 over e to the 0 0.04 times 2. What's the next one going to be? 1,000 over e to the 0 0.04 times what? 3. So this is how much $1,000 a year from now is worth right now. This is how much $1,000 two years from now is worth now. Right? Because it grows. This is how much if I put into a cut, it would grow into a thousand dollars in one year. It would grow into a thousand dollars in two years. It would grow into a thousand dollars in three years. Is there a constant ratio? Yeah, there is. What's our first term, Umi? What's our first term? Yeah, our thousand. And what's our ratio? One over e to the zero point zero four. There's our constant ratio, which you could also write as e to the what? Do we have a formula that tells us what this infinite sum is going to come out to? Yeah. So the sum is going to be the initial value over what? 1 minus e to the what? Negative 0.04, right? If you do that out on your calculator, I think you get 25,503. Someone could check that. You right here is if you ever want to plot sequences, I've given you the steps in your notes, the ones that I've shared with you, how to plot them. Please, your tablets should be flat. Your tablets should be flat. Thank you. Um, you can work through this on your own, uh, but I have given you the steps. You can definitely do that. Um, so you can plot, se sorry, sequences, not serious, sequences. It's nice. So it'll give you the first n terms of uh, the sequence. It's kind of cool. Okay, so what we're going to look at is partial sums. We've actually really already looked at this. A partial sum, what's the only difference between this and an infinite sum? Umi, flat on your desk. Good job. It ends, yeah, exactly, it ends. So we look at the, se we look at the sequence of partial sums. We look at the sequence of partial sums. And if that converges, we know that the series converges. So a sequence is just a number, comma, a number, comma, a number. A series is adding, an infinite series is adding them all together. So we come up with, what have we done? We've come up with an explicit formula for that and looked at what happens when n goes to infinity. So we'll be looking at partial sums. It's a good time. Here's the technical definition. If the sequence Sn of partial sums converges to S, so the limit of n going to infinity of Sn equals S, then we say the series converges. If it doesn't, it diverges. This is the technical way of writing what you already believe in. In order to figure out when things converge and when they diverge, I'm going to give you a few tools and a few truths that are generally pretty, pretty straightforward, generally speaking. So if you have two infinite series that converge, look what you can do. If you do the series of each individual term added together, it's the same thing as doing them separately. So this is interchangeable. Sometimes it's easier to do one or the other. What can you do with a constant? Just like an integral, what can you do? Bring it out to the front. The constant also doesn't change. Uh, oh, that's a different one, but that's number four. The constant doesn't change whether it diverges or not. Also, changing a finite number of terms doesn't change whether a series converges or diverges. An infinite series. So if you have an infinite series that converges, and I pick out a million terms and mess around with them, does that change whether or not the series converges or diverges? No. You basically, doing a finite number of things to an infinite series doesn't change its overall characteristic of diverging or converging. Uh, what else do we got here? If the limit, this is interesting, if the terms don't go to zero, so if you have a sequence where it does not go to zero, if it doesn't go to zero, let's say the limit is one third, can that series converge if you add up the pieces? No. So in one of the things you look for in a series, the, ser the sequence itself has to go to zero for the series to have a chance of converging. 
Just because something goes to zero doesn't mean it ha the series has to converge, but the terms better go to zero. What I mean by that is this. Let's say I had a series, ready? Let's say I had a series that looked like this. I'm just going to graph it a different way. Each individual point right there, let's say y equals one third. So here's one, one number in the series, in the sequence, sorry. The sequence is getting infinitely close to what? One third. If I add up all of these numbers, is it going to be a con is that is that going to converge to a sum or diverge? Diverge. Diverge because look, you're going to be adding up, always adding something one that's greater than one third. If this goes on forever, it's always going to be adding something greater than one third. So for a series to have a chance of converging, the individual elements, the sequence, must go to zero. If it doesn't, it definitely diverges. If you add up one third of the infinite number of times, is that convergent or divergent? Divergent. So the terms themselves, okay. And then this one right here. If the series diverges, then k times it diverges. Does that make sense? Like you can't multiply a constant by something that's divergent and something that's convergent plus it is zero. That's what it can't be zero. So what about this one? Does this series converge or not? If you're not sure if a series converges, write out a, a first few terms, the first few terms. So if n is 0, what does 1 over e to the negative n look like? If I make a table here, what's it going to be? 0, yeah. If n is 1, what do I end up with? 1 minus what? Nope. 1 over, yeah, e to the negative 1, right? If it's 2, what do I end up with? 1 over what? E squared. e squared. So the series is adding up all of these terms. So we're, we're trying to figure out, if you add up all of these terms, is it going to be convergent or not? What do you think? You think it's going to be convergent or divergent? Divergent. It's going to be divergent because, you see these terms? This is 1 minus a little bit. This is 1 minus a tinier thing. What do these terms get really close to? One. What is the what is the sequence getting infinitely close to? One, which is not zero. So this thing, you're adding something that's getting infinitely close to one to something that's getting infinitely close to one to something that's getting infinitely close to one. Therefore, the series is going to blow up. It's going to get too big. This right here, when n goes to infinity, simply put, the limit as n goes to infinity of this, what does that equal? 1. Why? You just looked at it. It's 1 over e to the n, right? And is that 0 right there? Is 1 the same number as 0? Just say no. I'm not asking you a tricky <laughs> question. So therefore, can this series converge? No, it can't. So let's move on a little bit. What about this one? Yeah, what about this one right here? Anybody know what the name of this is yet? No, we'll get to it eventually. <laughs> Do these terms go to zero? Yes. Does that mean it converges? No. no, it could converge. It at least has the chance of converging because 1 over n goes to, as n gets big, it goes to zero, right? It's pulled down to zero. The question is though, okay, they're getting infinitely small, but are they getting infinitely small fast enough so that when you add up an infinite number of them, it goes to a converged number. So there's a picture here. There's a picture here that's really helpful, and it's this picture. Take a look. This is the function 1 over x. You with me so far? You remember re making rectangles like this? This is kind of cool. This is a, this is a really neat I like it. Those were the days, right? What's the area of this rectangle right here? 1. <laughs> and then what? And then what? One third. Oh, is that are those the entries into the sequence that we're adding together to play with the series? Sure. So if I do the next one, it'll be one fourth and then one fifth. This is concave up and the left hand Freeman sum. So is this an overestimate or underestimate? You agree it's an overestimate because of these little pieces, right? That you can see right there. See this? Are you with me, sir? Overestimate, right? So what do we now know? We now know that if you sum up 
And what did I say? Why is that one? I always have to look at that one. And the, we know that that right there has to be greater than what? The integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx. Does that make sense? Like if you took the actual area right here, I don't know what it is. You know that this has to be greater than that. Do you agree with that? The challenge here is you can't plug in infinity into something. You go towards it. This is improper integral. You might have looked at them briefly. We're going to talk more about them soon. But all you really need to know right now is the way you evaluate this. So we don't know about this. So what are we going to look at? We're going to look at the thing on the other side. The limit as n goes to infinity, 1 to n of 1 over x dx. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the limit of the evaluated integral. We're going to look at the limit of the evaluated integral. Now you know what the integral of 1 over x is. What's the integral of 1 over x? Yeah, it's the ln of the absolute value. Well, in this case, all the n values are positive, so do we need the absolute value? We don't need it. We could put it in, but we don't need it, right? So we know that this is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the natural log of x from 1 to n. You have to evaluate it from 1 to n, the lower limit of integration and the upper limit of integration. So you have the limit as n goes to infinity of ln of n minus ln of what? 1, yeah. What is ln of 1? This is 0. So what do you end up with? This thing is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of ln of n. What does that equal? What happens to the natural log of a number as the number gets infinitely big? You know this. Does it get smaller or bigger? bigger? It gets bigger. So as you plug a bigger and bigger number into ln, what happens to the output? It gets bigger. So what do you say this equals? Yeah, you can say either DNE, sometimes they say infinity. The idea is, here's the thing. What did we just show? What did we just show about this? What did we just show about that integral? This thing blows up. How big does it get? As big as we want, right? If we want a certain area, we just keep going, right? This is bigger than something that blows up, so what do we know about this? It also blows up. Here's the basic truth. If you know something, if you have a series that's at this level and you know it blows up, something greater than it also has to blow up. Contrapositive of that is if you have something here and you know it converges, and you have something under it, what does this thing have to do? Converge more. Converge, you have more, but it converges. So above blowing up means it blows up. Below converging means it's going to converge. Is that all in terms of absolute value? In terms of absolute value. Like, um, what do you mean? By below, do you mean closer? What's the only difference on that one? Instead of 1 over n, what is it? So we're going to do a very similar thing. We're going to do a very similar thing. We'll look at this picture right here. Right hand Riemann sums. Is that going to be an underestimate or a lower? Uh, underestimate or an upper? Under or overestimate? It's going to be an underestimate. We know from this picture and our own belief that this, sorry, to infinity, 1 over n squared is going to be less than the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx. Can you, given a little bit of time, it's not that bad, can you evaluate this integral right here? Guess what? That comes out to a number. So if that converges, if this converges right here, what does it mean about this? It is convergent. Here's why. You ready? We can actually do it. It's not that bad. So what did I tell you? Can you plug, can you quote unquote plug in infinity into anything? No. So what do you do instead? You do, yeah, you do the limit as n, just keep on plugging in bigger numbers and see what happens. Sure. You do the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 to n of 1 over x squared dx. What's the integral of 1 over x squared? You know what it is. Yeah, negative 1 over x, right? Is that correct? I think that's correct, right? You can write it like this if it's easier to see. Like this. You drop the negative 1, it goes down 1, it becomes positive. A lot of negatives in there, right? But can we actually plug in these values? We, we can. So what do you have to plug in first? 
n. So you get the limit as n goes to infinity of negative 1 over n, right? Minus negative 1 over 1. Correct? Are you with me so far? So what's going, what happens when you evaluate this? What happens? What does this go to? It goes to 1. So we just showed that this whole thing, if you added up everything, goes to 1. These pieces are less than it, so therefore, what do we know about this? It must what? Converge. So above divergent tells you something. Below convergent tells you something. Everything else is ambiguous. Like if you're, if you're above a convergent, could it converge? Sure, you don't know. This kind of making sense? Uh, the harmonic series, the one we're just looking at, is kind of cool. So yeah, that's what we're looking at. For what values of p does 1 over np converge? So we just did 1 over n. So when p was 1, what did we know about if p was 1? What happened? What did that mean? It diverges, right? But then we did p is equal to 2, and what did it do? Converge. So in order to prove, we're not just going to test every value. We need to actually prove it. If you do out the general case, this is what it looks like. It's not that bad. It really isn't, but you need some time to read this. We're not going to go through the step piece. But if you integrate 1 over x to the p and do the same integration methods, what you find out, what you find out using this method is this right here. And this is the sum of really what we're talking about right here. You see this? The p series converges if p is greater than 1 and it diverges if p is less than 1. This is really helpful to you because you're going to get a big, messy thing. And you're going to be like, oh, that's a P-series, that's a P-series, that's a P-series. So you can prove each piece. Convergent, convergent, convergent. The whole thing put together is convergent. But what about divergent plus convergent plus convergent? Probably not. That was something weird. But the, this is a huge thing that you will use to prove that something is indeed <sighs> convergent or divergent.